I hereby call the uh, organizational meeting of the school committee to order. Uh, I'm Paul Schlickman. I am the chairperson pro tem, so I have the gavel for about five minutes while we elect officers. And I am so pleased to be back, and I congratulate my friends uh, Bill and Jennifer and on your election. Uh, it's going to be great working with you. Um, I now open the floor. Uh, for the nomination for the office of chair. Mr. Thielman. I nominate Mr. Hainer. Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Any other nominations? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Thank Mr. You. Hainer. I now open the floor for nominations to the office of vice chair. Mr. Hainer. I nominate Mr. Thielman. Second. Any uh, other nominations? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Congratulations, Mr. Thielen. Thank you. And now open the floor uh, for the nominations to the Office of Secretary. Any nominations? I nominate Dr. Kersey Allison Ampey. Second. Okay. Any other nominations? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Uh, I'm now looking for a vote to authorize the chair to sign the payroll warrant. So moved. Moved by uh, Ms. Starks, Second. seconded by Dr. Allison Ampey. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. Uh, per policy BDA, the new chair can read <coughs> to the committee the standards and norms of the Arlington School <coughs> Committee, which will then be signed by all seven members. We, the Arlington School Committee, acknowledge that a school committee meeting is a meeting of the school committee members that is held in public and not a public meeting, and that we will make every effort to ensure that meetings are effective and efficient. To that end, we acknowledge the importance of subcommittees, and we and the superintendent agree to utilize them to focus on specific topics in depth and to prepare for presentations, deliberation, and possible action by the school committee. We, the Arlington School Committee, set forth these standards and norms that we will all commit to abide by as individuals and as a committee. Number one, Represent the needs and interests of all students in the district. Number two, exercise leadership in vision, planning, policy making, evaluation, and advocacy on behalf of the students and district, not in managing the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Three, conduct our business through a set agenda. Emerging items will be addressed in subsequent meetings through agenda items. Four, provide full disclosure. Each member will provide input, encouragement, express concerns, and positions rather than withhold information from other members. When a committee member feels that there has not been full disclosure, an objective process for revisiting the issue will be used. Five, maintain an open environment where each member is empowered to freely express opinions, concerns, and ideas. Committee members will work together to clarify and restate, dis restate discussions in order to strive for full understanding. Six, keep an open mind and accept that they can change their opinions by recognizing that they are not locked into their initial stated positions. Seven, make decisions on information and not on personalities. Committee members will act with the best information available at the time, considering data, the superintendent's recommendations, proposals, and suggestions. Committee members will strive to make the best decisions at that time. Eight, debate the issues, not one another. The committee will engage in critical thinking, expecting all committee members to freely offer differing points of view as part of the discussion prior to making a board decision. Nine, not take unilateral action. A committee member's authority is derived only through a majority decision of the committee acting as a whole during an open public meeting. 10, attend meetings well prepared to discuss issues on the agenda and will be prepared to make decisions, striving for efficient decision making. 11, Strive to have no surprises for the committee or superintendent. All members will receive the same information on topics in a timely manner. 12. Strive to reach decisions by consensus. Discuss with respect. Disagree without acrimony. When consensus is not possible, all members will publicly abide by the majority decision. 13. Understand and respect the chain of command as it concerns roles and responsibilities and direct others to do the same. <coughs> 14. Review and revise our standards and norms as needed as part of the committee's self-evaluation. This time, I would ask all committee members to sign a copy of these standards and norms.
Thank you, Mr. Hainer. And congratulations to Mr. Hainer, Mr. Thielman, and Dr. Uh, Allison Appy on your election as officers of the committee for this next year. Uh, with that, I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Thielman, seconded by Dr. Allison Appy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> That's unanimous, and this meeting is adjourned.
Good evening. My name is uh, William Hainer. I am the new chair of the Arlington School Committee, and this is uh, Thursday, April 10th. Uh, first off, I would like to uh, share with you uh, that Mrs. Mary J. Perlatondo uh, was a retiree of our cafeteria. Uh, she served, uh, she passed away on uh, March 31st, 2014. I'd like us to, uh, moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, I cannot compete uh, with my former colleague with regard to the opening mar remarks that he always did. Uh, he was eloquent and I cannot match it. So my little endeavor, I will, each meeting I would like to share a bit of Arlington school history. In 1693, the people of Monotomy built a one room schoolhouse on ground now inside the burial grounds between what is now the first parish church and the library. It was bare and hard to heat. Students were expected to bring their share of wood. The school day was from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The school year began after the crops were picked in the fall, and the school year ended when it was time for planting in the spring. 221 years later, we have grown beyond that one-room schoolhouse. It is my hope that our collaboration and collegiality that was so evident in this year's budget process will continue in all our endeavors. Thank you. At this time, I would like to uh, welcome our new school committee member, uh, uh, Ms. Seuss. And uh, by her coming here, I've lost one of my uh, pieces of status. I am no longer the new member of the school committee. I still hold the other one. I think I will keep it forever. I'm the oldest uh, physically uh, mm -hmm. person on the committee. And I would invite anyone else that would like to welcome Ms. Seuss at this time. Jennifer, we're very glad you're here. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 <laughs> welcome, welcome. Come on in. You get to sit up here. At this time, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Ms. Hansen, uh, the AEA representative, and uh, invite uh, Rebecca Steinitz uh, to the table. Public participation. I feel like I was just here, and this time, unfortunately, nobody has um, hats with squawking. <laughs> what are you here for? Please. Um, what a welcome to the committee, Jennifer. Congratulations. So I am here on behalf of Arlington Education Foundation again with my trusty notes in my phone. And this time, um, well, actually, let me start over. Mr. Hainer began by talking about the origins of the Arlington Schools, and I'm here to invite you to a vision of the future of the Arlington Schools. As I think many of you know, the Arlington Education Foundation, in close cooperation with Laura and her vast number of technologically genius people, is um, has embarked on a technology initiative where we are raising funds to enhance, enrich, and help nudge forward technology in Arlington schools with a real focus on teaching and learning. So last year, our focus was the STEM lab at the high school, which has been a really exciting program, enabled us to expand um, computer science and many more applications. And our focus this year is the Odyssey, where we're working to support the technology literacy curriculum, and I'm sure I said that wrong. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Um, and from everything from teacher training to iPads to Arlington's first new era digital printer. We have a very old slow one, I believe. And, and this is the first new one, which I'm kind of excited because they're using it in seventh grade in tech, tech classes where I have a daughter. So, um, but what I want to invite you to is on Monday, March 5th, which I know is a month away, but this May is the last May, 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 May 5th. 5th. Okay. Thank you. Monday, May 5th, which I know is a month away, but I believe you don't have a meeting between now and then. From 6 to 8, 
Downstairs in the media center, we're going to have a technology showcase, which is going to highlight exciting things that are happening with technology in Arlington schools, many of which have been funded by AEF innovations, development and expansion grants, as well as the technology initiative. And now I need to go to my notes. Um, Laura will be speaking about the Arlington Public Schools technology vision. Matt Coleman will be speaking about code.org. I think that's um, the code for an hour, which again, my seventh grade daughter came home and coded for a week, a child who had never coded before and still has, like says things like coding forever, like things I don't understand in tech speak <laughs> that combine coding and seventh grade and I don't get it. Um, one of the Audison teachers will be speaking and that's all fantastic. But what I have to say I'm most excited about is we're going to have students there demonstrating what they've been doing, including um, advanced computer science students will be demonstrating the games they've been developing. Um, Students from the bracket will be doing something. Do you know what Anita Christina's students are going to be doing? They're demonstrating a project using technology. They're demonstrating a project using technology. And the tech experts from Thompson School, where, as you know, um, it's our full first full-on one-to-one school where all the kids have iPads and they've become tech experts. So I do hope you will join us. I hope you'll all be there because it's going to be a great evening. And thank you for having me. Thank, you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sounds fun. This time I would like to represent, uh, welcome our student representative, and I apologize if I mispronounce your first name. Garav? Garav, yeah. uh, He is an 11th grade student, junior class vice president, soccer team, wrestling team, and science Olympiad. Welcome. Um, we now are going to have Tools of the Mind update. Thank you. I have two members of the committee here. Uh, so anyway, my, um, my goal this evening is to give you my recommendation as to where we're moving forward with respect to tools of the mind. But there's, a, there's probably a fair number of people who have listening in tonight that probably does not understand what we're referring to. And I just, I want to give a little bit of history and explain what the Tools of the Mind program um, is about, and then talk about the work of the committee that um, has recently been looking at uh, a particular complaint from, a, from some parents. The history of the program is, actually dates back to the early 2000s. Arlington was one of the very first schools in the Commonwealth to be the recipient of the kindergarten grant. And as a requirement of that grant, we have to go through a certification process every five years. And we have. And, we've, and each time we've done that through the um, NEAYC, which is a, uh, the National Association for Education of Young Children, I believe, the, we have passed with flying colors. The only time we ever had a little, a little bit of a suggestion where we needed to improve was in the facilities at Thompson, which we have certainly done. It was after the second uh, round of, of, um, cert of accreditation that the teachers, the kindergarten teachers, um, who met regularly as part of a kindergarten sc screening committee, felt that we really need to look to see if there was something um, as an alternative to the, the accreditation process that we were going through. And for the, the first 10 years that we had the grant, that was not the case. But, after, but the Department of Education expanded what the opportunities would be at, to include a couple of things, one of which was the Tools of the Mind program, which is a program that um, ha has as its um, goal to help young students be able to access the curriculum by learning the, the, the social pragmatics of being in school and to be able to self-regulate their own behavior. It is a, it is a curriculum that is aligned with um, the, the Massachusetts state standards and has been very consistent, very aligned with our own um, kindergarten program here. We, at the time that teachers were looking to see an alternative, the, um, 
it happened to be that uh, NYU was also looking to pilot the program because they were doing a study to see how the program did relative to student achievement and some of the other goals <coughs> of the program. And uh, we, we applied to be a pilot. And in that pilot, we had three schools that actually piloted the program, and we had one school bracket that was the control. In other words, what that meant was the bracket continued having the same academic program that we had had for the years we were had gone through accreditation. And as, uh, Principal Zershikoff is here this evening. Can talk to you a little bit about that experience if you'd like to have any, um, if you have any questions about it. At the end, at, so we, at the last two years we have been in the pilot. And we knew that we had to make a decision as to whether we were going to go forward with adopting this curriculum district-wide. Normally, we don't bring a curriculum to the school committee it's for a, any type of adoption. That's, that's generally something that we, it's done internally. Certainly, we talk to you about it. But in terms of approval, um, we haven't done that. I made the exception this time because of the link to accreditation. I didn't, you know, if we were going down this pathway, I wanted to be able to say to the Department of Education that the school committee approved the adoption of this program. So that's the reason why we, we had that discussion, actually many discussions last year at this table, um, looking at the program. School committee did vote to it, adopt the program. Um, it was unanimously supported by the principals. And this year, we adopted it across all seven elementary schools. During the two years of the pilot, we really did not have any complaints from parents. In fact, uh, quite the opposite. We had a lot of compliments about the program. This year, however, we had uh, several parents, one family in particular, who felt that the, uh, the the, curricul the literacy curriculum, which includes the uh, Magic Treehouse series, the first eight books of it, they found that that, that, that was a frightening, the, the stories in the, the Magic Treehouse were too frightening for their child. One parent said that. Some parents said that they just, the children felt uncomfortable. So as part of the process, um, what was um, put into place this year was the, po the committee that is described in one of the policies of the school committee, which has a curriculum review. And we went through the formal process of which uh, the parents uh, uh, filled out the paperwork to initiate that committee. Uh, Dr. Chesson chaired the committee, and it was made up of teachers in the district. It actually, it's very prescribed in the policy as to who's on the committee. It's a, it's a, princi it's a principal teachers in the district, mm -hmm. um, the library and media specialist for the district, and um, we also had a community member that were allowed to have other people besides those who are prescribed. So this committee met. Um, they also had two evenings of hearings on this, and what the first evening was the, for the parents that had initiated the complaint and any other parents that had concerns about the, the Magic Treehouse series. There was a second night in which um, Parents and teachers who support the pro mm -hmm. support the use of that that series also came to the committee and um, testified. The committee then put together a, uh, a recommendation to the superintendent, which is per policy, explaining their reasoning, what their recommendations are going forward with respect to the use of uh, this series in the curriculum. You have a copy of that report that was put into your um, packet. And I want to just go over some of the, the highlights of this. Because what the, what the policy asks for is the committee to make a recommendation for the, um, to the superintendent, and the superintendent make a decision as to where we're going with their recommendation, or if I have an alternate recommendation. And that's what I'm doing tonight, is to give you an update on my thinking on this and where we're going forward with um, the, ma the um, Magic Treehouse use of, I should say, the use of the Magic Treehouse books in our Tools of the Mind curriculum. So I told you what the process 
I'm going to what the process of the committee was. Let me tell you what their recommendations are. The review committee recommends that the Magic Treehouse series should remain in the kindergarten curriculum. Teachers should continue to employ strategies to alleviate student fears that arise in their classrooms. Training and mentoring efforts should disseminate and support those strategies. The Tools of the Mind Committee should compile and share a list of sensitive passages in the books that teachers may want to omit or reword at their discretion. So those are the main, main recommendations of this committee after a thorough review of reading the material, hearing the different points of view, and I concur with their recommendations. I will say that this year I have been in every single kindergarten classroom, and in many of them more than once, to look at the program, see how it's being implemented, talk to the teachers. And I will say that some of the passages, and I've said this before at this table, but it bears being said again, is that when I have talked to teachers as to whether they had actually read the passages that were um, of concern, I didn't have one teacher tell me that they did. They may, have, they may have paraphrased it or skipped it or just put the key information in so that there would be some consistency in the story. But on the other hand, while I believe that that was the case, I think that as a district, since this is part of our, our program, that we should be more explicit about what passages um, should be considered to be either skipped or paraphrased, giving, giving supplemental uh, suggestions uh, to teachers. And I think that the best people to make those recommendations would be the teachers themselves. We have a standing steering committee for the kindergarten program. And in fact, that steering committee has been in place since we, when, since we uh, we were able to, to have the grant. And so the, the plan will be to, to have the teachers meet. We may need to have some uh, summer curriculum work on this, because I'm not sure that we'll be able to accomplish it during uh, the course at the end of this year. But certainly having very explicit um, suggestions in terms of where, of um, what passages we might want to skip over in those eight books. Now, there are still going to be, as parents, some parents point out, still going to be some students who may be uncomfortable. And um, in the report, they had said that um, in talking with the teachers in the program, that this was a very rare situation. And in fact, um, in, the la in the two years of the pilot, the teachers that, were, that, that testified said that that was not their experience. And that when they did have children that, well, what they have, what they have suggested when they felt that children might have been uncomfortable this year is to suggest that parents um, perhaps pre-read or have um, the, the teachers themselves would um, sort of explain a little bit more clearly what was happening and you know that the characters in this story are going to be fine, they're going to be safe. So to, to allay a lot of those worries. They had a whole list, and it's in your report, of possible suggestions of what um, could be some strategies that teachers could use next year, or this matter this year. And, and I can tell you that I'm, I know the teachers are doing this. But it, I think, again, it goes to we need to be explicit and have this information available for teachers because we are probably going to have some new teachers next year in our kindergarten program. In fact, later on, I will talk a little bit about kindergarten numbers. I know we're going to have at least one more kindergarten teacher and, and um, that we're going to be hiring. So we need to make sure that our teachers, current teachers and future teachers, have those guidelines in terms of um, the books but also available to them some strategies in which how they can handle, handle any kind of situation that could arise. I will also say that um, one, of the, one of the recommendations that I have made to all principals next year 
is that the half-time TA that we have for the kindergarten program be in the morning, which is when we do our literacy. In some schools right now, we might hire a full-time TA, and that TA may spend the morning in one kindergarten class, but the afternoon in another. And that arrangement has not worked out well, and it doesn't work out well with this particular program. So next year, we're going to change people's schedules and so that that can be accomplished in all the schools. That way, when that is, when you have an extra support in the classroom, when you're doing the, the literacy block, the opportunity to, have, you know, if, if a student was uncomfortable, to take the student away from the, the group, that, that possibility exists then. I think that um, teachers that have felt that need this year, um, and they might have been the person that would get the afternoon TA has found that it's been a little bit difficult to, to manage the literacy program without a teaching assistant there. But one of the other things I think it's very important to say that the report also uh, talked about is that there was, a, there was a misconception that the Magic Treehouse series was the only literacy mm -hmm. Uh, the only books that were being read in the in the uh, kindergartens, and that is not the case at all. They have a very rich they have a very rich curriculum that's supplemented by lots of books. And if you go into any cl any kindergarten classroom, you will see shelves of books. What they what they do with the themes that um, from the Magic Treehouse books, they use that to launch the different kinds of re books that they might have for that unit. If they're, they're looking at um, the Amazon, they're going to have a lot of books about perhaps South America that launches into to, to discussions about different cultures in South America. They, they, can, they, can, they can branch into animal life. There are, there's a lot of richness that the, that the teachers are actually doing. And as I said, you're, any of you are most welcome to come visit a kindergarten classroom. The other important piece, which wasn't touched on as much in this report, but I, I want to also talk about, and that is the professional development that we have given and we will continue to give. And I think that it's in the course of that that we will um, provide teachers with more, more explicit directions. When we began this full district um, adoption. We started last year, and I think you remember this, when we had the two days where the <coughs> teachers were out of their classrooms and we started the professional development. That, that, was, that was for all of the new teachers to the program. This year we've continued the professional development. All the early release days have been devoted to this. Um, all the kindergarten teachers have go to a mentor program, just like we do with the reading <coughs> and the math programs. And we also have had coach, a coach. Now, there was a little bit of a controversy about that, but that has all been smoothed out. So there are, we will continue that and um, talk to the kindergarten committee in ways that we might want to expand even what we have been doing. So my recommendation, th this program is an amazing program. And I think from just talking to teachers just recently, you get finally to January and February and you see the fruits of what, what the program does. And we, I, I would say now from the report that I have from Sherry Donovan, who is the kindergarten coordinator, is that there is, a, there is widespread, stronger support for the program. In fact, I was just at a meeting this morning with a number of superintendents and one person mentioned to me that how this particular program, Tools of the Mind, along with the KIPPS academics, are being um, referred to as the, as the premier programs right now in terms of how you help young children to develop those kinds of habits of mind around being able to be a learner in school. So it, we are in some ways very much on the cutting edge of something very important in education and it's really a major paradigm shift. And what I mean by that is that 
in the in this program we have young young children thinking about their their responsibility for their own learning and that is something that's if I say it's a really major paradigm shift that they have learning goals and they need to they need to figure out that week how they're going to achieve their goal it, education is not something that you give to someone. It is not something that they are passive rec receivers of. It is something that they are active participants in and not only active participants in, but much more determinative of what they need to learn. So our hope really is that the, the important lessons that they will learn will be something that we are going to be able to continue on in as we, they move through our school system. And to that end, we will be, you know, first grade teachers are this spring are going into the kindergarten classes to observe. We're going to be, you know, we're, we're not changing the first grade curriculum, but there are changes in, how, in the pedagogy, perhaps, of how a classroom is organized. So we're doing a lot of, um, I think, really great work there. We also have uh, the responsive classroom, which is, um, something that we can talk more about at this table, but it, it again is looking at ways that, that children um, become better learners by being more responsible and be more connected to their peers as well as to um, the school. So we are doing a lot of work there, but I do think that this was a very good, I think this was a very good process. I think it, g it gave us an opportunity to think about what we're doing even more than we had been, and realizing that, that we probably didn't communicate well enough this year with parents about what this program was there. We, we made some assumptions that we shouldn't have made. In the pilot, there was, because it was a pilot, we were communicating and teachers were in, in constant communication with parents and so the parents felt very comfortable. That didn't happen as well as it should have happened this year. And so, the, you know, this was clearly what one of the outcomes of that, but I think that it's, it's, a, it's a positive because I think that we really had to look and say, how valuable is this to us as a school system? And at the end of the day, I say it's, I, I want to continue this program. I, I know I have the support of all the principals in wanting to continue this, as well as the vast majority of the kindergarten teachers. And I, I have been out and about for, uh, for a number of uh, principal searches, as you know, and um, I can't tell you the number of people who have who've mentioned this to me, the number of emails I've had, the people want this program, and so, I, I think we'll just get better at it, and I just think that also this uh, this being able to take a look at the explicitness of what we're doing is is good. It's very positive, and that's what we will do. But I also want to ask uh, Laura, and in fact Rebecca Steinitz, who was on the committee, is here as well, and we have uh, Stephanie Zercher called the principal bracket, and and Laura, I don't want to put you all on the spot, but I don't know if there's anything <coughs> that you would want to add to what I've said about where we are right now. I think we were very. Uh, touched by those parents who came and spoke uh, in su um, support of the program. Um, there were many parents who came and talked about very personal experiences that their children had had with the program and parents whose some, there were a few parents who had one child that had participated in the program and had read the books and another one who didn't and I think there was actually a parent who said my older daughter or, or son um, is jealous that her younger sibling gets to uh, read these books as part of the school program. So um, I think it was a very thoughtful process. I want to thank everybody who participated, um, whether they were f uh, for the use of the books or, or against, but I think um, the committee felt t to a person that this was a unanimous decision that we had given. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say anything? Uh, Stephanie, you're welcome to. You don't have to, though. <laughs> I think one of the real challenges of public education is balancing the needs of the many and the few, like everything in a democracy. And I think, um, 
you know, it was very clear from, and, and we asked specific data-based questions. We asked teachers for numbers of students who had been fearful of the books, and we also asked student teachers for number of students who they thought may have been fearful, but not felt comfortable saying that, because peer pressure is operative in kindergarten as it is for the rest of our lives. And they were just absolutely clear that it was a very small number. And at the same time, it's very clear that there are children who are fearful of these books. And it was really important to listen to the parents who spoke out on behalf of their children um, and to take those children seriously. And that's why we felt like one of the most important pieces of the report was to emphasize the strategies that teachers are using to alleviate children's fears proactively and when they see that they're happening. And I think that we really want every child to feel comfortable in their classrooms in Arlington. And that was really the thrust of our report was to make sure that the benefits that these books are bringing to so many children are maintained while at the same time meeting the needs of all children. Thank you. Any members have questions? A question on the letter. Um, at the very bottom, last paragraph, it says, the committee believes the kindergarten steering committee, which is teacher reps from all seven elementary schools, is the appropriate body to review the books and compile a list of these passages. On the first page, under recommendations, it says the tools of the mind competition. What, is it the same? Is it different? It's, it's, it's the same. Okay. I probably should have made that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're not, is the, no, the Tools the, of the Mind Committee it is the steering being disbanded? Committee. It is the steering committee. Okay. Uh, unless you meant something no. different. No, no, it is the steering it's committee. It's the steering committee. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Follow-up? Go right ahead. Uh, not on the books, but on the curriculum itself. Mm -hmm. With the pilot program, have you, uh, have there been any studies or research done with the students who are now first graders or perhaps even second graders, having had the program in the pilot schools, in terms of how they are in comparison to the peers who didn't have it? And, and what has that shown? Well, where they are? <laughs> I think at this point it's anecdotal. Um, the, the first grade teachers will say that the, the students know how to work together and better than they've ever seen other students do it before. They, th that has been an amazing difference. Um, they're able to um, plan regulate themselves more they if they have disagreements this is one that i've heard several times if they have disagreements with someone else they they work it out they know they know the they know the tools that's what it's called to them they know the tools in terms of how to deal with conflict or it's my turn no it's not you know sometimes those can escalate to the teacher not now, all of those interactions work out perfectly no of course you know that's that's with kids. But what they're seeing is a difference. In terms of the reading, which is, of course, all our concern, is that um, when we did the, our analysis, and we'll continue to do analysis, which is a report you had last year, we did not see any significant difference between um, the, the achievement of students in the tools program as compared to mm -hmm. past, past um, achievement. And I would say that in the study, there was no difference between the, the bracket students and the other students as well in terms of, of reading achievement. We've been doing in the tools curriculum our own math. We are not doing, we do some of their, their games. In fact, some of their math games are actually quite good. And we've, we've incorporated them. But we pretty much stick to what has been our kindergarten curriculum for math for the last couple of years. Um, we will continue to look at that data, um, but I do think you have a very good point, and we just haven't done that, but I think that we will do that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, perhaps we can do it vis-a-vis -a, -vis a survey, because I'd like to have more first grade teachers participate in, in getting, sharing their opinions about it. But our challenge is that if once they've learned how to do learning goals, we need to keep having them do learning goals. And when they have learned to work in groups, we need to continue. These are the kinds of skills that our children need to have in whatever, th whatever they do 
in school for that matter, but also just in work and life. How many, we all work in teams of some sort. And those, those behaviors have to be <coughs> learned young. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to suggest, I realize that the list of paragraphs that are sensitive hasn't, hasn't been compiled yet, but if we're expecting the parents to potentially be pre-reading books, they're going to need access to that list too because they need to know, okay, this is one we can just skip. We don't need to try and explain that because that would be really important for um, I agree. people. So somehow it needs to be available. Right, good suggestion. And we, we actually had talked about that too. So okay, great. Right on. I have two. Uh, number one, do we have, uh, have you thought of a new coordinator since uh, the current one is retiring? Is that in the works? Um, that's definitely in the works. Okay. Uh, I can tell you more information on that later. Fine. The other one, and my memory is that when we talked about this earlier in the year, I asked about assessment at the end of the year. And what I just heard, correct me if I'm wrong, we're talking anecdotal. And I thought I heard back then that we were going to be able, we're very data driven uh, in all our curricula, and, and we need. We're spending a, a considerable amount of money. I'm not saying it's not worth it or anything, but to continue this in future budgets and stuff, we need to know what gains. Again, I thought I heard you say anecdotally. No, it was just more in terms of the behaviors. Uh, in terms yeah. of in terms of achievement and academics, we definitely track all of that. So we we bring. My understanding was I asked for it at the beginning from the previous year in the dead midnight. We talked about it having by the end of the year. Is that something you could bring by? They do. The in fact, Ms. Hansen uh, was, does. They do that all. They do a, a compilation of reading scores for all the grades every year. Okay. I guess what I'm looking at uh, or asking for is something that would be unique to tools as opposed to. Uh, well, we're spending this money. We made a shift to go to this program, and I'm not. I guess I am judging it. I, I want to see that we're getting our bang for our buck. That's all I'm saying. Yep. And as we've done in math and the other thing, we, we had a brand new math program and things of that nature. And I'd just like to see that, okay. if it's possible to do. If it's not, I'd like us to look forward in doing it in the future. Could, let, me, let me see if I can um, narrow this down. Do you, are you looking for student achievement or are you looking for behavioral I guess markers? At the, at the beginning, when we talked about tools initially, I asked, is there an assessment com uh, a component on this to show gains? And I guess if we bought this program for a particular goal. We've changed it. We, cha we dropped a kindergarten program in reading and such, my understanding, and in implemented this program. So maybe that's an area. I thought we were also doing the math. We do math. No, their program in math. No. Okay. So. Parts of it. Can I? I was also under Mr. Hainer's impression that mm -hmm. there was going to be some assessment, and I, I thought it was in the behavioral issue to give some some idea of how things are going. So yes, I would also be interested in. That's something that we in, can look at. Is how we're going to? We, maybe tools would have. Um, a, a well, actually, we were part of the study that um, the develop. Actually, an independent study that was uh, okayed by the developers. So they didn't do the study. We were part of an independent study. And the data from that study is is about to become public. That 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 data will include and by about we were told sometime before the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, that that study looks um, not only at student achievement but looks at behavioral outcomes. And so we'll have some of that data, but that will only be of our pilot schools right. in comparison to our um, test uh, control test schools. Mm -hmm. So. Um, in terms of once we look at that and we look at the measurements that they're getting, then we'll be able to take those. I think it would be a good baseline to go look at measurements for the other schools. It, it may be this day that you're talking about that both Mr. Hainer and I are. We're, we're awaiting. We're awaiting. There was right. an, there's an outside organization that did a study. Right. The, the, we that, currently have a contract for Tools of the Mind, am I correct? Correct. And that's a two-year contract? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be important for us, meeting our fiduciary responsibility, to have solid information <coughs> before we go forward. Uh, to another year, another two year contract, sure. Maybe you can give us the end of the course assessment, see if we pass it, see if the school committee passes it. Mm -hmm. Don't go there, we're not <laughs> self-regulated yet. Yes? Um, I am all for gathering data 
I am not for testing our students. So mm -hmm. if we can gather data, and it doesn't include any more testing of kindergartners, which I just find absolutely abhorrent, um, I'm all for it. But I, I, I think that, unfortunately, a lot of the data is going to have to be what we observe and not, not anything that we can test other, I mean, we already test them in math and reading, mm -hmm. and so we have that, but I, there's, I don't think there's a test for behavior. I, I would agree with you 100%, but in my experience, and it goes back 20 years, kindergarten teachers are constantly gathering data from observation, but it is empirical data, it is not uh, anecdotal. Some of it's anecdotal, but it can be applied. They, they have, it's, it's part of the program. Mr. I don't want to believe this too much. The other thing that might help, and, and I actually will answer your concern, is that um, as also as a requirement for the state next year, all kindergartens across the state will have to use a, um, a method of observational collection of data called Teaching Strategies Gold. Um, we will only be using two facets of that. That's all we're required to do. One of those facets is the social emotional, and then we will be able to collect data and then compare it against other districts. So that's a way for us to do something that we already have to do without putting any extra burden on the student. You know, we're not going to really know the impact of the curriculum for a few years. I mean, so I think that's, that's just a, that's just a fact. I mean, we'll see the results in second grade, third grade, fourth grade. So I think you know, let's. I think we have to give be patient and give ourselves four yes. or five years. Here, here. We'll see. Yes. I'll be up. I've asked Mr. Schlickman to check. Yeah, it, I'm wondering when the kindergarten website is going to be updated. Um, the teachers have um, done p portions of it. And the literacy people and the math people and social studies and science people are each working on it. I would say within the next month to six weeks, um, with MCAS going, with PARC going, mm -hmm. um, with you know all the other initiatives that we have going. While I agree it's important, mm -hmm. we also have to balance that out. So they have. I know work's ongoing, but getting it up. I believe that there was the overall um, description of the kindergarten curriculum that, that has already been put up there. Not under the teaching and learning, but under the kindergarten. Right. Yeah, under the kindergarten yeah. My no? last look. Okay, Two let me let me double let me double check why that wasn't put up because I know that it's written. Right. That, so that's, I, I will double check. Was my impression I just, I that it think, was up? I understand that there's a lot going on, but also kindergarten's not doing MCAS, and they're not doing. Part. No, but the curriculum coordinators for the district have to check over those things, and they are involved in those other things. Okay. On several of the school web pages, it still lists the old program the tools replaced. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't we year. don't have control over all those web pages for the individual schools. They're done by volunteers, Fine. but I will check into that. They reflect us. I, I, I hear you. I know. And someday maybe we'll have standards. Go ahead, briefly. Um, was there any discussion during the two meetings, the public hearings, of possibly accepting some of the books in the program, but saying no entirely to a couple of them? Um, was there any discussion about it, whether or not it would be violative of our contract or our curriculum as a whole, uh, being that they're so intertwined with, with the program. Um, in other words, I want to know if, if it was even possible to even um, balance the interests of those who felt affected by them in a way such as to minimize the impact of, of the books that were most uh, worrisome. I, I'm going to Laura speak to what happened in the committee. I can answer from another point of view that um, I, this question was put to the tools mm -hmm. um, coordinators through Ms. Donovan, and this is this is the curriculum, mm -hmm. and we there are not. Let's say you take one of the books out, there is not a corresponding. You can plug in something else into that unit. But we're doing that with math. I mean, we're. That's we have a blend. We yeah. use a lot of their games, and, and they, they themselves admitted when we talked to them about it that our math program was more rigorous than theirs. Mm -hmm. They admitted it, and, but they're working on theirs, but we, didn't, we weren't going to wait. Mm -hmm. so, but on the other hand, um, the, their, their literacy program is... Mm -hmm. It's not that dissimilar. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm saying that here with uh, Linda Hansen, who is one of our literacy coaches for the district, and she might be able to talk a little bit more about that. But um, certainly our results in terms of the DRA are pr 
pretty consistent. I may be a little bit not at the the number that we might have seen, but I don't even think that's the case because we're actually we're upping what we think should be the benchmark number for kindergarten. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? About changing the end of year benchmark level? Um, just very briefly, and I feel like this is kind of a side topic, but because of the new Common Core standards and as things have evolved over time, the big names and researchers and program, people who write their reading programs have increased the end of year benchmarks for kindergarten, first and second grade, really in an effort to get, to kind of get things jump started a little earlier on so that everyone reaches um, reading levels at the end of third grade. So where B3 used to be our end of year um, benchmark for kindergarten, C and even D is now often um, used as end of kindergarten. Correspondingly, in first grade, it's been raised a little bit, and in second grade, it's been raised a little bit. But the interesting part is that the end of third grade still really is being maintained fairly consistent. So it's really just to kind of get things, get everyone, light a fire under everybody earlier on to get more kids kind of over that um, mark sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, in, I don't want to say a lot about the tools reading program because honestly my counterpart, Evelyn DeRosa, who was a kindergarten teacher for 15 years, is the one that's more well versed and is kind of more integrated now with the tools program and, and learning more about it so that we can better support it in literacy. Um, but I will say that, you know, I think what we've seen overall is that the writing is, there's a lot more of it and kids come out of it. Uh, that writing program as very engaged writers who aren't afraid to write, who enjoy writing, and um, are motivated to write. Um, and the reading scores, as Dr. Chesson and Dr. Bodie have said, there's been some variability, but really kind of within the norms that you might expect. Not, not, a, big, not a big difference between the tools and non-tools classrooms to date, anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm all set. Cool. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to move on to a warrant articles for town meeting. And uh, the first one is Article 28, Appropriations Town Budgets. I guess I would ask uh, the group here, historically, we discussed the ones that we're supporting or ones that we're directly involved in. Let me rephrase it like that because and the first one is the part of the, the appropriation, I assume, is our school budget. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that quite extensively. Uh, Ms. Knox, do you want to add anything new or more? I think we should move in favor of it, although I'm not sure that they need that. I mean, and I, I don't know, is it always been, I mean, I asked this question earlier, but neither Bill nor I knew. Is it always true that all of the budgets are lumped into one article like that, and then they're pulled out at town meeting to... Okay. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, the budgets are done in an omnibus fa fashion where people can come down the line and hold the bu any budget they want to question. Now, e the town meeting has the ability to question specific line items in every other budget except ours. Uh, for us, it's the one line item that we voted already, so uh, we don't need to take right. any further action on this. Right. And seeing the Finance Committee is supporting our number, um, uh, we should be in good shape uh, going into town meeting. I would, I think that one of the distinctions Mr. Schlickman just made is very important. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, on all money items uh, usually makes a recommendation to support or no action. Mm -hmm. And if it's no action, it would, mm -hmm. if any other thing is going to happen, it requires substitute, substitute motion mm -hmm. made, but that's not going to happen with mm -hmm. us, yeah. that aspect. So, any other discussion on that particular one? Uh, the second one, Article 38, Appropriations, Elimination of Extracurricular Programs Fee in Arlington, in Arlington Public Schools. This was a uh, taxpayer initiative. Uh, uh, the Finance Committee and the Selectmen both have voted no action on this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, uh, the Budget Subcommittee uh, suggested that they go through those other boards mm -hmm. and discuss First it with them mm -hmm. that because the, and we had not taken any stance on that at that time right so I mean anybody want to add anything beyond what I said on that one I I think that they're probably going to ask us our 
mm -hmm. recommendation on it. And so I feel that, you know, we probably should have a recommendation on it. I mean, I have a very hard time being against anybody who wants to give money to the schools, but mm -hmm. the method in which this kind of does an end run around one, for two reasons one doing an end run kind of around the budget process but two the fact that we have already gone to the town and mm -hmm. gotten um, mm -hmm. fairly extensive money to help us uh, with the you know issue with um, enrollment mm -hmm. I, I feel like I can't support it and I just that like totally my heart is in my throat saying that but I just I I have a hard time asking the town when I know that you know this you know hasn't been <coughs> approved by the other boards and I understand that but I think it's important because they will be, if they if mm -hmm. these folks bring it forward right now there's no uh, the recommendation is no action take place if they don't become active during town meeting it dies on the floor mm -hmm. to, as is I a substitute motion to my feeling is if we make a statement tonight mm -hmm. do we automatically transfer that statement to whatever substitute motion comes forward no. I, okay I, I, I no we can't I, I that's what I guess that's what I'm saying what I'm saying is for us to take an action tonight well we need I think we need to take an action on the way it's it is as is right I mean yes it's true someone could amend it in which case what we say has I guess no where I'm coming from is I'm the one that's going to have to make the statement and I just want to clarify what the board is looking at mm -hmm. right. so Mr. Schlickman, uh, Dr. okay I, I think that uh, failing a, a positive recommendation from the Finance Committee we, we need to work as a team in this town so we need to work with the selectmen and the Finance Committee uh, in order to craft a budget and to have an appropriate share for our purposes. Uh, we have built a very strong relationship. Now, w when the, the proponent was here before, I remarked this is a very admirable thing, but if you were to go and take a one-time appropriation uh, to add to our budget for the purpose of uh, eliminating fees, one, the town meeting can't direct us how to spend it legally so all we do is get extra money and we could do with it what we please uh, legally because um, town meeting can't earmark money to the school committee secondly it's a one-time only fix and we'd be back in the same spot we are next year uh, I expressed uh, the last time that perhaps an override for the specific purposes of eliminating all fees might be a direction to take later on but that's my personal opinion at this time I think the school committee needs to be a partner with the finance committee and the selectmen going forward and support a no action vote I'm questioning whether we have to take a position on this at all given that it is something it'd be nice to have money for the schools but we want to be a team member and so I'm thinking I think we should just be silent on it yeah I would agree with Chrissy the there's, there's a vote of no, there, there's a recommendation of no action on the article. So mm -hmm. the only way it can be presented is if there's a substitute motion. Right. We don't know the wording yet of the substitute motion. So we can't really, we can't really comment on it. Now, if we get a substitute motion and you're concerned about it, you can call a meeting, emergency meeting of the school committee or just schedule the meeting of the school committee during that week and we can talk about it. So I think we just have to wait. If the, if the proponents uh, publish it ahead of time and that's the will of the body, I'd have no problem. I just got to be frank. Usually, substitute motions come up that night and stuff like well, that. Well, sometimes, be. well, they're supposed to. I agree. Yeah. Mm. Come forward. They're supposed to be written out. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So it's written out and on the chair, mm -hmm. the well, meeting before or something like before. that. So, yeah. so we should have some warning. We should have a 48-hour. We should have a 48-hour warning. So. Is there? Okay. Is that the, mm -hmm. the will of the body to call an emergency yeah. meeting? That's fine. Yeah. Just sub if a substitute motion yeah, is presented. Because that'll be a fun week. We already have to be there today. <laughs> um, that was cool. We could, we could, uh, we could um, schedule a meeting 30 minutes before every. No, 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 we can call it now. Call it now. That we just automatically just, and then have you it cancel it if you don't yeah. need it. Right. Yeah. So that you have way. a meeting that's already posted before every um, town meeting. Mm -hmm. And then you can cancel it. 
Well, I mean, the, so the reality is it's Article 38. Mm -hmm. So it won't be the first night. Mm -hmm. The second night is the special town meeting. But that's mm -hmm. over fairly quickly. You'll okay. have regular business. So the, the question night. is if it would, I don't, mm -hmm. but, hmm. so we wouldn't need mm -hmm. the special for the 28th, but we might need it for the 30th before the special. Sure. A special before the special. Mm -hmm. A special special. <laughs> special squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, real quick, I would just, I think the 30 minute prior posting all those ahead of time means that at least four of us have to be available uh, for that, for all those meetings. So we have trouble getting a doodle. Oh, only, only if we yeah. actually I, have business conduct. Right. Moving? Mm -hmm. We all settle on that? Yeah. At this time, we're taking no action to take no action at this time. No action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moving on to the warrant for special town meeting, Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. Article 6, Appropriation, Pierce Elementary School Repair. How did that go? As far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, that's just paying the bill? Um, it's actually, um, we've paid the bills and it would be seeking reimbursement from the emergency right. funds of the town to reimburse the school department for the expenses we took because of the flooding that occurred because of a boiler pipe freeze. Mm. Boil a failure, pipe freeze, very cold day, right. bad things, flooding. Right. Okay. And the finance committee said? Yes. Good. Any other? Do we need to vote on it then? We don't. Okay. Mm. They've already. Okay. Mm. Unless you plan on voting against it. I don't get to vote. Mm. So. Moving on to Article 7, transfer of funds, special education stabilization fund. That's the, that is the request to the special town meeting to remove the $500,000 from the, the special ed stabilization and bring it back into our budget to close the gap for this year, to help close the gap for this year. Do we have a specific number or? 500000 We're going to, okay. we're going to drain it. The whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that? Again, should just, we vote? Yes. I'm just concerned that we do our best to keep the conversation that issues from this coming up in town meeting at a level that respects all of our students and does not denigrate I'm anyone I'm and, and no I'm, I'm saying because I've heard other people in town and and I want we need to be really clear about our messaging and that this is I can guarantee okay. that prior to coming on the committee uh, mm -hmm. I would every time those issues would come up mm -hmm. I get up and put okay. it to bed very quickly mm -hmm. that's wonderful mm -hmm. Okay, uh, moving on to updating the evaluation, Chair. Oh, oh, just a couple of things sure. on the warrants. Yes. Um, I wanted to bring to the committee's attention warrant article number, wasn't on our agenda tonight, I apologize. Article 13, it's on page 5, um, inserted by the Board of Selectmen bylaw amendment, Poet Laureate. See if the town will vote to approve a bylaw creating the honorary position of Poet Laureate of Arlington or take any action related thereto. I understand that this would require of the school committee an appointment mm -hmm. uh, of um, that we make similar to making an appointment to the Human Rights Commission, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. uh, to select uh, a poet laureate who would actually, the hope is that person would work uh, in conjunction with the school department mm -hmm. for the purposes of educating our children. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, to move that we support, uh, make, a, make a motion to support uh, Article 13. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All mm -hmm. those, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think this sounds like a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. Just Pierce mm -hmm. is adding more to my table. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Mr. Schlick. Well, one other item while we're talking about town okay. meeting. Uh, before mm -hmm. us is likely to be, uh, or certain to be the revised Minuteman regional agreement and the issue of Minuteman does play into the town's finances in a way that could be very taxing when we're trying to go and uh, build a high school. Uh, the regional agreement before us was watered down as far as we're concerned. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the the, weight, the vote will be weighted half weighted and half not as opposed to a fully weighted vote which was the original proposal that was coming down for Minuteman. It's not an ideal agreement. I don't think this is an agreement from which we can authorize expenditures for a new school because the district still isn't viable but it is an improvement over the current agreement 
where we're stuck at one sixteenth of a vote. Uh, it's going to give uh, other towns, particularly the small towns like Dover, which sends one student, the opportunity to relinquish their vote and leave the district. Uh, uh, I don't think that the committee should be taking a position on it per se, but it's something that we need to be aware of, and I would ask those folks here at the table who are members of town meeting to support the regional agreement because it's not the agreement we need, but it is an improvement over what we currently have. I hear your request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Article yes. 21. I, I would like to bring up Article 28 again. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we as a body probably should take a vote on supporting it. I know it's our budget. I know it came from mm -hmm. the superintendent and that we, we, uh, mm -hmm. we support it. And I, I, I think that uh, we should just formally mm -hmm. say that we support Article 28. I would ask uh, for the amendment that we support that part of Article 28, which is the Arlington School exactly. Budget. Committee budget. Right. All right. School department. So department. moved. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion on that with the friendly amendment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are we finished with the warrant act? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so I just want to be clear that we need to be at both of these meetings on Monday, April 28th. They start at what time? 8 o'clock. 8, 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 8 p.m. And the same with the special town meeting. Well, They're both at the same the, time. Mr. Schlickman, yes. uh, as the dean, do you think it's necessary for non-members to be there for the special town meeting? No. No. I, I, you know, the items on the... You may want to be there for the special, but it's not necessary. As... Uh, we, the, you have... Uh, a, the chair will be there. I think that one, two, three, four town meeting members out of the seven... Yes, because uh, the budget chair yeah. and it being budgetary well, items. Well, I the only reason I say that is because rarely uh, is there any dissension over the special town mm -hmm. meeting articles. Mm -hmm. They're usually understood they're paying bills or reimbursing, in our case, things of this nature. Mm -hmm. It's already done. It, it doesn't serve any purpose for okay. people to argue okay. against them. Mm -hmm where the regular town meeting, there is discussion. And just for the purposes of identification, the members of the committee mm -hmm. that are also town meeting members are? Mrs. Mm -hmm. Myself. No, not and myself. Me. Okay. Yeah, Four of us. But I would say the night the budget's voted on, yes. and usually we know a day or two in advance, yeah. that's, we should all and try to do that. we don't have that date yet. No, we won't, but we'll, we'll know in a few weeks. You'll, you'll, as soon as we're, the, okay. the ones that all are right. town meeting members, will pass right. it on to the rest of the meeting. Excellent, yeah. thank you. It looks like a thin warrant, so that might come up pretty quickly. It might. Okay. The estimate is maybe the fourth night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. One more try. We'll move on to the update on evaluation system. Dr. Chess. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to give you a brief update on the educator evaluation system that we have in place. Um, just to sort of give you an idea of the enormity of the task that we had this year, we have 154 teachers that are non-professionally statused, and those teachers are on a one-year plan, which means halfway through the year. Um, this is on a blue piece of paper, I believe. Um, uh, they're on a one-year plan. That means halfway through the year they get a formative evaluation, um, and then at the end of the year they get a summative evaluation. We have 86 teachers who are all uh, professional status who are also on a one-year plan. Um, these teachers were chosen at random to be on a one-year plan, and the effort was to create a balance of workload for those um, folks that are evaluating. They, again, will have a formative assessment report in the middle of the year, which they've already had, and we'll have a summative at the end of the year. And then we have 201 teachers that are on a professional status two-year plan, which means they will get a formative at the end of this year, and then at the end of next year, they'll get a summative. To let you know, um, we've done an excellent job uh, meeting the dates pretty much across the board. Um, the big dates that are coming up ahead of time uh, in the future on April 30th, all the educators will provide evidence to their evaluators. If they're on a one-year plan, they'll be providing uh, three years, uh, three pieces of evidence on standard one and standard two, um, which are the standards ar ar around curriculum and instruction and meeting the needs of all students, as well as some evidence regarding their professional practice goal and the student achievement goal, which each teacher has. Um, each educator on a two-year plan needs to provide some evidence uh, to their evaluator to be considered with the final evidence due uh, of, of the same amounts in April of two, 2015. Um, at that time, 
the uh, evaluators will also have concluded the last final observation of the year and the feedback sessions by that date. And this will prepare them to go into the um, assessment reports, whether it be a formative assessment report or a summative assessment report, which are due to each educator by May 15th. And then we'll go into our final cycle of meetings for the year. So there's a, there's a great deal ahead of us in the next um, two months or so in terms of the new teacher evaluation system. Uh, you Earlier this year, you saw the data that we had from teachers regarding um, their feedback on the the system as we have done so far. We have had a number of uh, help sessions could because the uh, number one concern that was raised was the baseline edge system that we used and teachers feeling that they needed some more additional training. Um, Susan Bisson, who part of her job is to go around and do instructional um, technology support in the district, has set up times and sent emails to teachers. I'm gonna be at the high school Wednesday afternoon from two to three in the media center. If you need any help, come on by. But in addition, um, in a reminder notice that I just sent out to the staff, she will also make personal appointments with teachers and set up time at their convenience to go and sit with them and help them should they need any assistance. Um, we'll also be doing the same survey that we did mid-year at the end of the year and be able to um, compare the data. Questions? Questions? Um, there's so many observations that have to be tracked Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, I, I know you said that the software is capable of, of looking and making sure that things are, are going, proceeding according to time. Are, is that being checked and is that happening? I mean, are yes. they proceeding? It? Yes, I'm checking those on a, a regular basis. Um, the evaluators as, as a whole meet four times a year. Um, and so we have discussions about reminders. Um, when we have administrator meetings, they get reminders of when the next upcoming dates are. Um, I also meet with the uh, special education evaluators uh, every other week, and we have had a study group going on with evaluation with the special education evaluators, and I meet with the uh, Audison evaluators every other week, and we, again, do a study group on evaluation as part of the, our meeting, and then I meet with the curriculum coordinators also every other week. So those, in those meetings we discuss where I've already checked, and, mm -hmm. and if there's anything that looks like it might be behind, we, we check into it. Okay. So most people are on track or? I would or say 99.9% .9 okay, of them. Okay, great. Anyone else? Uh, one question. It's my understanding somewhere along the line, we, the state gets, do they get copies or are we just under an audit or? No, this, all we do is uh, send a file at the end of the school year, which will give the overall rating for the teacher plus the rating on each standard. No, no text no rating, text. that's it. And uh, the issues that were involved with phase one uh, at the beginning of functioning and stuff, is that all the more child? For the most part, yes. <coughs> I mean, part of it, the part of the problems that we're still having is that we have, which hopefully will be resolved um, come the next school year, is that we have teachers that are using very old equipment. Mm -hmm. So no matter how good the software is, if the, the teachers- the, soft, the software bugs and issues that were problems at the beginning. Everything that we've reported to them has been fixed. Part of the new teacher orientation, will this be a piece of it? Absolutely. Thank you. One thing I, uh, if I could, I want to mention, cause we're going to be getting to that point where we do put in ratings. We have an agreement that we are not doing exemplary ratings, even though that is an option. And I think that the collective thought on that is until we really understand more clearly what that means, the impact. The, and the impact mm -hmm. of that as well, but even what that means, um, we, um, we are choosing not to do that. So when people, because I, I understand that this is, will be public information and how they aggregate the data, but that is a, that is a, a well thought out decision. All set? Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to the monthly financial report. Well, we're uh, closing in on the end of the year. The final uh, requisitions for FY14 budget will be due into the business office um, shortly before the spring break. And then we'll have a sense of where we are um, with final requests for expenditures this year. And based on where that comes out, with the 500000 coming from town meeting, we'll see how far into our other reserves we have to dip to close out the budget. 
on an even keel for the end of the year. So we're getting closer. We're, we're zeroing in on our final numbers for the year at this point. Next month, hopefully, we'll have time to process all the requisitions in time for, yes, the, the, the reports, the next meeting is May 8th. So I, I hope that we'll be able to have everything in place at that point mm -hmm. and I'll have a closer view. I also hope that our fuel bills that now that spring is finally upon us, we'll be closing out the cost of the winter and see where we end with our utility bills or close to where we're going to end. 80 on Monday. Mm. <laughs> what? I heard 80 on Monday. <laughs> Degrees. Well, then we, we get to try out our new air conditioning. Yeah. Energy efficient. This a quick question. What are gray bills? Gray bills are, okay, gray bills are the methodology by which expenses are transferred between different departments within the town. Uh -huh. Since the maintenance people and the custodial people live in our budget, when they perform services for other departments in the town, there's a gray billing process. So for example, a maintenance, a maintenance worker is going to go work on the, pl our plumber is going to go work on the plumbing at the public safety building. His overtime or his time would be charged to the gray bill account instead of to the usual school account. And then we would rebill, we would gray bill the police department who would accept the bill, a lot of paperwork. Um, they would accept the charge and so we would be credited in the gray bill line and they would be debited in their line so the expense would move from our budget to their budget. Because these people live in our budget and we know the expenses are going to be moved, we put them in the gray bill account. Conversely, for example, um, until very recently, um, fuel for our trucks for DPW or for, trans for our buses and transportation mm -hmm. would come from the DPW to our gray bill <coughs> line. So we had expenses both coming and going mm -hmm. and it was used kind of as a pool you know, that it generally ended up with about a balance of this and that's how we budgeted. But now I'm trying to parse that out more and I, I'm trying to put fuel for, tra for the buses and transportation and I'm putting fuel for maintenance in maintenance. So it, it's the expenses that are sliding back and forth among the different departments in town, predominantly DPW. Um, but whenever our maintenance or custodial people perform functions in other places. Bottom line, it's still your tax. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, I didn't bring my last week's or last month's budget thing with me, but I didn't understand, I, I understand that we, even with the higher amount that it looks like we're in deficit for this year with, with the special education stuff, I, I, I understand that we have reserves to cover that, but I didn't understand why there was such an uptick last month the things that were listed or that I heard at the meeting seemed like things that we would have known about for a while. And so I didn't see where that, why all of a sudden it It bounced. wasn't. And, and maybe this is something that should was, be answered at the next meeting or It or was, an ex it was a, a gradual escalation. You know, sometimes it looks like the expenses are going to level out. You know, that you can expect sort of ripples in the year. And what was very different this year that really caught my eye in January and February is they weren't mm -hmm. leveling out. They were continuing to expand. Mm -hmm. Hospitalizations leading to out-of-district placements. And, and there was, you know, we knew that we were seven, $700,000 bad in the fall. We knew right. that. And typically there's some up and then there's some down and there's sort of flattening out. But in special ed, that didn't happen this year. It, it continued to escalate. And that was the point when I was really able to see, no, this isn't going to level out. This is really escalating. Okay, so that it had been up for a while, but you were thinking it was going to do that. I did. Again. I did. I okay. thought it was. You know, it was. Okay. Yeah. There's always a there's a fair amount of up and down in SPED, and you know, uh, under my direction, the special ed uh, financial manager, I always want her to over encumber. I want her to worst case it. I want her to put it in the budget as bad as it can get. And typically, then there's a rollback. Then we go back and say, oh, you know, kid moves from this placement to that placement. I want that one encumbered before this one necessarily gets lowered because I want to know how bad it can get. And so I'm expecting, okay, you know, all right, it's looking a little high. Well, let's go ask. And then, well, gee, it's staying high. And well, have we done the rollbacks? Ugh. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what happened. That was the timing of that. And, you know, my ability to concentrate on it kind of came after I was doing all the scramble in January to get the budget together. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, the superintendent's report. I have uh, a number of things. Well, first of all, we're in a, another principal search, and, I, and at the moment I don't have a uh, recommend appointment. But I just 
do want you to know that we had a parent evening the other night at Thompson that was very well attended. Great questions. Uh, we have three very good candidates, and um, I'm in the stage of doing extensive reference checking and probably additional interviews. So uh, that's where we are with that. This um, yesterday, was it yesterday? <laughs> I did. Um, Secretary of Education Matt Malone was here. He has been tasked with the, by the governor to, to look, to, to, to make recommendations about school safety. Mm -hmm. And this committee was formed, it has about 35 members from all different uh, groups, and they had been meeting in different places around the state and asked if they could meet here in Arlington for this meeting, which they did, mm -hmm. and they met at Thompson. Um, the um, meeting went very well. They said it was actually the very best place that they have actually been in. When they heard, first heard it was going to be in a gym, they were a little bit nervous about that being in a gym, but it turned out the acoustics were terrific. In fact, so much so that the speakers did not need to use the microphone. And, and, and Mr. Hainer was here, and it did. It worked out it worked very out well. Really well. They had one of the speakers, the first speaker was Dr. Berkowitz from Riverside. This is a, a resource that Arlington has used quite a bit. When we had the REMS grant, we had Dr. Berkowitz come in and do some professional development, some recommendations on our processes and procedures, um, post-trauma. So we have, we have been using him quite a bit in R Riverside over the years. They also had um, state police speak about uh, the different different recommendations they have around school safety, uh, one of which was a, an interesting one, and I, and I talked to the principals about this, um, uh, the, actually that was yesterday, and that is we do fire drills, and of course by state law you have to do five a year, um, but we also do lockdowns practices, because you do need to to practice these things, but they also suggested doing evacuations. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we will be considering doing. Then the last speaker was part of the NEMLAC group who, who um, does training in the STARS group, actually beyond the STARS group, on ALICE training. And we this year we, we've talked to the staff, or at least I talked to the staff, and then Steve Porcello, who's our school resource officer, talked to the, the staff on professional day about um, the, uh, some of the, 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 the main points of, of ALICE, which basically is not much different than lockdown, but, but one of the, the, the main differences is that when the opportunity is there, that students and faculty should evacuate the building. And another really important piece, and this is the state police also said as well, is don't speak in code over the light, over the intercom. S say it as it is. You're, you know, you're in lockdown or we, we know that there is someone in the gym area of the high school or whatever so that people know exactly where the, the intrusion is. Um, our plan here in Arlington is to move forward and do more training and, and getting it, we, we certainly have a lot of new teachers, we have new principals, and it's time again to renew um, the, the protocols that we have, and so we're going to be spending more time on that. It's just that this year, it was a little bit of an intense year, and so um, that, that'll be coming up. If I could just add a little piece. It's one of the things that struck me, I substitute in Concord and Lexington, and they have two different systems. Mm -hmm. and, and putting, you know, when the substitute goes in, one system has color cards encoded. The other one has the booklet. And uh, they're looking for consistency in it. Another aspect that they mentioned last night, just common sense, especially in new schools, a lot of the rooms are connected uh, like that. When the teacher leaves his or her room, and I'm sorry to say the state is there, lock the door. Because if six teachers lock their door and one teacher in the middle or in the end leaves their door open, all classrooms become vulnerable by an intruder. And uh, Things of that nature. Uh, consistency, the two state troopers were talking about it. They deal with 28 school systems in the western part of the state. And uh, they, look, they, it requires training. But I can tell you, it's very important. Uh, just as a resource, uh, the town of Concord does evacuation. I spent a third of the day, we evacuated 
three blocks up the street. The whole school walked out. Yep. And an evacuation. We've done that. We, we don't did. do it every year, but okay. we, I think we do it every other year. Mm -hmm. But we do, yeah. It'll we practice where we're going, so right. that the, mostly for the teachers, because well, it's I true. Agree. You need to know where you're going, right? So it's going. mostly for the teachers. Mm -hmm. It's not. I mean, the kids, yes, but to them, it's just like any other. Just that they happen to be going further away. It's like a fire drill, but further. Right. But I think it's good to know as teachers for mm -hmm. sure. Well, it's also another part of the evacuation is the reunification because if, if, a, if yes. a school can't go back to their school, mm -hmm. where do parents come and get them, and right. how do we notify them? Mm -hmm. And exactly. you know, we we have the alert now, which is is certainly the way we would notify them. But we do need to make it very explicit to parents that please do not go to the school, please do this, please do not do that. You know, right. and that needs to happen. And so we're going to be working on those very specific instructions. So it was good. But I was also, because it actually gets into um, one of the people that was there was Mr. Jack McC McCarthy, who is the executive director of MSBA. Well, you should have had the meeting mm -hmm. here. <laughs> uh, town manager Show them how weak our uh, uh, safety is. I town manager talked with them quite a bit. Yeah? <laughs> I, I saw him the next day. And, uh, I talked with him, too, after. <laughs> and um, he knows that we put our SOI in. That's good mm -hmm. that the executive director knows. And I asked him, well, I said, well, you know, can you shed some light on <laughs> how many uh, submissions there have been? And he was very, very coy about that. <laughs> In part, he said, the deadline is tomorrow, uh, the 11th. Hmm. And he said, people just submit at the last possible minute. And I happened to be at, in, with one superintendent today. He said, yes, but they were submitting today. So it's hard to know, really, mm -hmm. how many will be out there. But one thing he said that was very interesting is they have almost twice the many requests for major repair mm -hmm. this year than they had last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so since it is one pool of money, mm -hmm. I think a, a policy decision on their part is going to be, well, what piece of the pie are we going to go to major repairs on versus school renovations? And that is mm -hmm. going to affect you know, how many schools they take. When I was at a meeting with Mr. McCarthy back in the fall, in rough, in rough numbers, they only take one or two high schools a year just because of the cost of it. Because when they, when they mm. sort of accept and know that basically the ballpark idea that um, they already sort of put that and encumber that money. Mm -hmm. And so there's a guarantee that you're going to, mm. if you go forward and all the different procedural steps that you will have that money when you need it. So we collectively cross our fingers on this. We'll see. Mm. But I was glad to know that he knew that we had submitted. That's mm. good. Um, we, we've uh, had two schools participate in the new park assessments, and um, I want to give a lot of credit to Laura and actually our whole IT team. This has been quite, quite an endeavor, really, to get ourselves ready uh, for this. And uh, if you could just talk a little bit about maybe the preparation and then how it all went. Um, everybody on the IT team and also in the data team uh, played a part in this. Earlier this year, we had to um, take files that came down from the state that had all of our students and then delete everybody that wasn't going to be taking the pilot version and then mm -hmm. upload them um, just to make life interesting to uh, Pearson. Um, the people at Pearson, um, hardworking as they may be, are almost just about one step in front of us. So when one would call for uh, to get assistance from the uh, cu customer helpline, oftentimes I was put on hold while the person that answered the phone went to go find somebody else that was more experienced than they were. Um, we did two classes at Dallin on the iPads and two classes at um, Audison in the uh, computer labs. Um, the staff did a lot of preparation up front. We actually did a test, and when we did the test, we found many problems uh, that mm -hmm. took three to four hours for each lab to uh, resolve. Um, we had to test out a variety of keyboards to make sure that there were because even though with an iPad you need to use a keyboard, um, so because you need the full screen of the iPad. 
Um, we actually found that the iPads were easier to use and had less problems than uh, to use the labs. Um, the, it's interesting to note that when you go for trainings, they tell you that you can either run live, which means every time a student asks for the next question, it goes up to the internet, takes the question down, mm -hmm. student gives the answer, and then sends the answer back up. Or you can do what's called caching, where you download the entire test, all the student answers are kept there, and when the test is completed, all the student um, answers are set up. Um, the state will tell you that you may do it either way, mm -hmm. um, but they sort of recommend that you cash. And we found out by accident um, that you absolutely need to cash. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, we ran Audison cash the entire time, and the second day of the testing requires students to watch um, video and listen to audio and look at a number of uh, reading sources. Um, mm -hmm. They need to take notes on those uh, sections, and then they need to compile the information from those sections mm -hmm. to create one re simulated research paper mm -hmm. or paragraph. Um, at uh, Dallin, we thought we had cached it and found out after the fact that no, in fact, we hadn't and had major problems on Wednesday and we're getting really worried about it until we realized that we hadn't actually cached it. There was one button that actually hadn't gotten pressed, which is good because it says that if you have it cached, um, the amount of video, um, there is no problem. The students uh, took it very, very seriously, unlike their counterparts in New York City that were reported in the paper. Um, they. Uh, you know, tried their hardest. They really uh, responded well to the technology. I saw students highlighting things and using the cross out feature where you can sort of eliminate answers. Um, most of the students that I talked to uh, really preferred taking it on the computer, um, but did comment on how the test was much more difficult uh, than it had been um, when they took MCAS. Um, recently, um, Ms. Hansen and uh, Mr. Rosa uh, both uh, are in the process of training um, third and fifth grade teachers to see what it, uh, the uh, park experience looks like. And uh, they were quite surprised, I think, the teachers at how difficult and, and what a daunting task it will be for students. And it will require us to make additional changes to our instruction to provide students with the skills that are necessary to be successful. Any questions? No. Just comment. a comment. I think possibly as tech, the, the children seem to reflect their ability in technology. Uh, with their, uh, they were totally nonplussed about it. We were way more worried than they were. I think, I think and I, again, it's going to cost us some money and stuff, but the more we go to technology and the actual uh, assessment of students on a regular daily basis, I think this will be just one other aspect uh, coming during the year, at the end of the year, or whenever they get it. Uh, so that, I think MCAS has always been in isolation, and Park would be too, but it, I think the technology aspect is the thing that draws kids more today than anything else. Um, I sent around a, an email about uh, the fact that the Peabody School Committee has um, mm -hmm. voted to send um, a uh, letter. Um, they are saying that Mitchell Chester being head of park and uh, secretary of education is a conflict of interest and uh, want to force a cease and desist on park until either he steps down or at least slow it down until we can all figure it out. Um, and uh, I think that I don't know what we think about this um, as a teacher I have to say that the rush and the push is overwhelming given everything else that we're doing. Um, and so I can only imagine that the same is true of the teachers here in Arlington. And so I really want us to have a conversation about what we think. Um, it's very interesting to me that, you know, when I hear of school committees doing things like that, you know, sometimes I feel like oh, it didn't even dawn on me that we could say no. Like, and, and I feel like we need to do that more often, that we really are. We are one of the, you know, places where we can say, no, this stops here. This is crazy, and we're not going to do it. Um, and that sometimes we need to stand up and say those things. Mm -hmm. And whether or not we decide to make that statement, I think it's worthwhile of having those conversations. And I'm not whether or not it's a good or bad. I am not an anti-testing person, you know, as a general rule. I think it, it gives us some good information. Um, I think that 
you know, moving to the common core is a good thing. And I think that obviously if we have a new curriculum, we're going to need a new test. I don't know if it needs to be PARC or new MCAS or whatever. But so I don't want people to think like, oh, you know, it, I'm just against it because I'm against it. But I do think that, you know, it really made me stop and think. Um, you know, is it a conflict of interest? Do we agree with that? Do we also, there are lots of school committees, this is up on the MASC, you know, email system that are saying, hey, that's a great idea, or hey, we're going to start talking about that too. And, you know, we need to start, it's like, I feel like sometimes I forget that part of our role is also to be a gate to to allow our schools to breathe and do things and and say you know hey as a school committee we need to we need to you know stop and think about that and i don't know i know it's not on the agenda and i'm more than willing to not have the discussion tonight but i would like us to be thinking about that and and what we think about it and potentially put it on an agenda for future meetings. i think we're developing an agenda for the round table i mean the, re the retreat excuse me not round table I think that's one of the items you and I talked about another item. Yeah. Besides the goals and stuff of this nature, which I, we'll talk a little more about that later in the meeting. I don't know if I'd want that in the retreat. I think that's something that uh, should be done. We can talk about it. Uh, out front, but uh, it, it's an appropriate thing to put on the agenda. I don't, my gut instinct is that, you know, I don't have enough information about Park to know whether or not it's going to be an improvement or not as we go through the pilots we'll have a little better idea but I think the point that Peabody is making that the Commissioner of Education is also the head of the park unit it, it does raise some questions about the the state's uh, push in that direction Spend some time at a future meeting. the other thing the other thing is is that uh, we or another committee uh, may want to go and craft a, a resolution for the MASC General Assembly, uh, and that resolution would be due in June, so that we should be alert as that conversation goes out to see if somebody else is crafting uh, a resolution that we'd sign on to. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I also read the mm -hmm. email from Peabody and or their statement, their mm -hmm. letter. Mm -hmm. My sense of it was that they were asking the question you know, that this should be evaluated whether there is a conflict of interest. And I thought that was certainly a very reasonable question to bring up. They weren't stating that it was. They were saying this needs oh, to be looked right, at. Right, right, right. And, and mm -hmm. I think that so I would certainly support further discussion and possibly doing a letter. Maybe we could mm -hmm. come up, someone could come up with a draft, mm -hmm. something for us to talk about for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a stab at that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. <clears throat> yes. The, so, Cindy raised a question. Are you getting pushback from the teachers in the park pilot? From the teachers? Yeah. No, I, we didn't. We really no, we didn't. We didn't. I mean, I mean just it's a small I, number of it, the sample size saying. is very small. Mm -hmm. So, I'll make that's a, let me finish the question. Yeah, sure. one <laughs> one English teacher at the middle school because we t put all the English sections in a hat, mm -hmm. pulled out two English sections, hap happened to be the same teacher. Mm -hmm. So we had one teacher affected at the middle school and we have two teachers affected mm -hmm. at Dallin. Um, as I said, the teachers were concerned. Um, they want their students to do well. They want it to not be an uncomfortable experience for the students, but in reality, this, we were way more worried about it than the students were. I mean, while they took it seriously, I saw no stress. Hmm. Um, the fact, maybe because it was done on a computer mm -hmm. and so it was sort of game-like to them. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is that in the end, teachers kind of looked back afterwards and said, mm -hmm. not really sure why we were as concerned as we did. Um, I know at Audison, the, the students that participated were told that they were um, explorers and adventurers and they were providing um, feedback to the state so that next year the exam would be better for their colleagues and they took that very seriously I, I would agree our concern was mm -hmm. when we saw the example the third grade mm -hmm. we thought oh my goodness the, there are some skills that we're That's not sure that our, our children would have and so we actually mm -hmm. did some preparation on that but it turned out went yeah. very very well yeah mm -hmm. it, it went well I didn't see students stressed I do believe though 
you know, there's a, there's a positive and negative to everything. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes by seeing that, it makes it very real as to what is required by the Common Core. And we've discussed this as a committee, you know, with the committee before, that it's one thing to align your curriculum. It's another thing to realize what type of instruction is necessary mm -hmm. in order to help students achieve mm -hmm. uh, the Common Core and the kind of 21st century education that we're looking for. Um, and I think that the test, though, um, daunting, mm -hmm. um, really brings it home for teachers as to how their uh, instruction has to change. And while the elementary school has been moving to that, they started last summer talking about it, um, there has been less movement uh, at the middle school and certainly much less movement at the high school. So as a result, I think teachers are seeing, oh, this is why this would be necessary. And sometimes that's a motivator to make changes mm -hmm. that one might not naturally take. I guess my reaction was less on the children, just that there's so many things that we're asking of the teachers, the staff, and everything, mm -hmm. cumulative thing. And I, I guess my thing is, if this was only just the conflict uh, between the uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chester and, and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm just looking to find a way to alleviate some of the burden and, mm -hmm. and spread it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think children are very adaptive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except for proctoring, we did not ask our te teachers to do anything. But it's still to one let them, more thing you know, on the, yeah. we've got the new evaluation, we've got the common core, mm -hmm. we've got this, we've got mm -hmm. retail. It's just, it still sits there. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not part of this uh, uh, mm -hmm. practice thing, it's still sitting out there waiting to happen. And uh, that's all. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would just add that as a teacher, when you tell me it's my job to do something, I am going to smile and say, yes, ma'am, and I'm going to do it because I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. But does it bother me? Yes, because I know that the kids who took park had to be excused from classes in the morning to take it, which means that they missed my class when, when they would have been in my class. And you know, I'm trying to get them ready for MCAS, which is coming up in math. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, yes, I am doing the new teacher evaluation, and I am trying to get into retail, and I am trying to do these 47 other things. And yes, I do them, and I smile, and I don't complain because I'm a professional. But it is not that it is not a pain, and it is not that it is not a stress on teachers. And so I don't think that we can necessarily say, oh, yeah, no one complained at all. It was fine. Well, because they're professionals and they're going to do what you tell them because that's what they do. So I, I you know, I, I just want to make sure that I think that, you know, I think it's sometimes that we don't, we don't think about mm -hmm. being protectors of our teachers enough. And I, I'm realizing more and more that that's, this, these things are coming down, that we need to be kind of holding that at bay sometimes. And that really needs to be part of our role as school committee. And, mm -hmm. And I'm starting to really feel that at both ends. So I just. I support this as an agenda topic for a future meeting, Fine. Mr. Chair. And perhaps we borrow a line from NBC. If it's recreational, we call it park and recreation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the way we, we implement. Mm -hmm. As the new chair, I designate you to put something together and tell me how many minutes you'd, you'd like. I still have a few more things. Sure. Yes. Of course. Yeah, I know. We, we got, we we got, got off. Um, kindergarten numbers. Oh, yeah. Mm. How do we go? Here we go. We passed our projections, oh, and no. we're past the number we have this year. Oh. oh. This is April. Mm -hmm. wow. What have we got so far? Okay. How many? I, I think we're at 469. Maybe it's 470 right now. And what did we start with this year? We have 468. <sighs> but that was at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. So. I would say that about 23% of the, in that vicinity, of the students are in buffer zones, which is sort of exactly as last year, sort of mimics the amount of the area that's of the town that's in a buffer zone. And it's going to actually be very helpful. Um, it's going to involve some strategic decisions that I'll fill you in with later after I really have to dig into this. But we have a number of siblings. And those children, of course, will stay in their school with their brothers and brother and or sisters. Um, but we will see, um, we certainly are going to see Brackett and Dallin keeping four. The question is, how do we 
it would, how do we manage not to have five? So those are issues that are mm -hmm. facing us. We just have a, we have a lot of a lot of kids, and it's not just registrations for kindergarten. We're seeing more and more registrations for other grades as well going going forward. So there'll be more on that as we go along. Um, one of the things that's at your that was um, at your place is the program descriptions for special ed. I know that all, many of you have asked for this, and the committee has the uh, the special ed department has been working on it. Um, to give much more clarity to what each one of the programs are in the in the special ed department, and, and um, we've it's been read by multiple readers, and hopefully any typos are gone. But we will also be um, putting this on our website as well, so people can see it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. So Thank that's you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it, we, we know what a fabulous music department we do have. But um, I, I, this particular congratulations goes to Jenna Haviland and Jen Wei, Wei, the conductors of the Arlington Treble Chorus and Odyssey Orchestra, mm -hmm. respectively. And they were both order, um, awarded silver medals at the Massachusetts Instrumental and Choral Conductors Association Festival this past week. And it's a very demanding competition that attracts the very best ensembles in Massachusetts schools while being separate from the all-state activities. I understand from um, this way that we were, the orchestra was one point from gold. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the judges said to her after, said, are you sure this is a middle school mm -hmm. orchestra? Mm -hmm. so, congratulations to them. Good for them. Uh, also, congratulations to the um, Performing Arts Department, the high school, mm -hmm. great production of Footloose. What talent! These, it's amazing, isn't it? And that's a that's a tough uh, mm -hmm. repertoire of singing, and they did a fabulous job. And then, of course, the art exhibit. There'll be some more art exhibits coming this spring at Town Hall. Um, the I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the March newsletter, but it is much longer than past. But <laughs> Honestly, the it, the range of things that are going on in this district is just uh, amazing, and um, a lot of congratulations goes to our teachers. And I say this over and over, but really, they are amazing in terms of the the ways they they stretch their students, the ways they part participate and inspire our students. And you can see that when you you take a look at all the different uh, both curricular and non curricular activities going on. So I think that is it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the consent, <coughs> excuse me, consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. Mm -hmm. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant, warrant number 14141, dated March 27, 2014, in the amount of $754,961.32. Approval of draft minutes, school committee meeting of March 13, 2014. Do we need to pull the minutes because Jennifer wasn't mm -hmm. here, or can she just abstain? Just abstain, like just abstain from the whole thing. Yeah. Here, oh, so. just <laughs> You're not supposed to vote on them. Right. All right, so let's pull those. Any uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? One. Uh, subcommittee and liaison reports. Uh, mm -hmm. Appointments <laughs> to the Arlington School Committee. Did I read the wrong one? You, you, you didn't read March 27th. Yeah. I apologize, may I borrow yours? Yeah. I mm -hmm. uploaded the wrong one. Okay, it, uh, approval of draft minutes, school committee meeting of March 27th as well, 2014. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? One. Okay, thank you. My vice chair is keeping me honest. Thank no, you, sir. Jobs. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to look to the vice chair. Do I just read these? Uh, well, you know what? I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the appointments uh, of the chair of uh, the subcommittees and committee liaisons, mm -hmm. and maybe you should speak to who's going to be the chair because okay. it's not clear. Okay, under budget, it will be uh, Ms. Starks. 
under policies and procedures, it will be Mr. Pierce. Under district accountability, curriculum instruction and assessment will be Dr. Ampey. Under community relations, uh, Mr. Schlickman. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. And a uh, special study group on superintendent evaluations, Mr. Hainer. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank may, you. may I just make the comment that it's really good for the committee to have this ready to go the first meeting, and I appreciate the chair's efforts to do so. Well, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Fitzgerald, who has prodded me religiously, and <laughs> Mr. Uh, Thielman for helping me finish it. Thank you all. <laughs> I neglected that at the beginning. I will need, the old man will need as much help as he can throughout the year, and it's coming <laughs> forward. <clears throat> Uh, policies, uh, committee reports at this time, uh, policies and procedures. Okay, so we have second readings on a bunch of policies that were, uh, were for first reading or the last meeting. So uh, I think we can do AC, ACA, and ACA-R as one motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, excuse me, any discussion? Any so. Discussion? You want to know what's going on? Why don't I just say, yeah. What is that? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So why don't we just back up? So um, we were working with attorney Rebecca Bryant um, and uh, AC, there was a policy which was ACACA, and uh, Rebecca Bryant uh, said these policies need to be separate. Um, and she wanted to have one policy which is AC, which is a non discrimination statement that's updated. Um, <clears throat> with uh, uh, language that's consistent with our contracts and with language that the uh, U.S. Office of Civil Rights of the Department of Ed Education recommends. Um, <clears throat> a separate policy, ACA on harassment, mm -hmm. um, and then a separate policy, ACA-R uh, on procedures for addressing complaints. So her recommendation was you can't, you shouldn't have it all in one big policy, it mm -hmm. should be three separate policies. Mm -hmm. So we're basically um, eliminating the old AC slash ACA with this motion and adopting these new policies. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, now, <clears throat> and I'm conscious of what Jed recommended, which I, I agree with. It's better to redline the policies. Mm -hmm. And so now you're going to be the chair, so you can manage this. <laughs> <laughs> And you will, so it's uh, no longer my problem. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, Rebecca's preference was to delete a policy and just rewrite it, so that's what we did. Uh, so the new, the, okay, the proposed policy KAA codifies the current practice of having correspondence sent to the administrative secretary and then forwarded to the chair and all school committee members. It adds a requirement that the administrative secretary attach a list of correspondence to the agenda. And, the codif and it codifies the current practice of detailing the options the chair has with correspondence. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the new policy also states that the administrative secretary will respond to the correspondent with information on any steps the chair has taken regarding the inquiry. So really the only thing that's different um, from our current practice is that instead of the secretary reading all of the letters that come, the, the mm -hmm. information about the letters that come in, Karen would um, attach to the agenda that's sent out to the public, mm -hmm. to the media and everyone else, a list of, uh, Dr. Bodie and Karen, and I guess oh, Karen's oh. going to work on a, on a, on a yep. structure. But basically it would be who wrote the letter, what the, theme, what the, what the topic was, and the date it was sent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Could, does this also, have we included correspondence an individual would get that we individually would pass out? I then would ask, all committee members to get something individually. When they send it to the rest of us, please make sure Ms. Fitzgerald is Not that you have to. Yes. Yeah, I think I've used your discretion. So if it's so if it's something that's just between you and someone that's different. That's different. But if it's something that you think something everyone should have, make sure you include mm. Karen so we have it. Right, right, right. Mm. Or if someone also the other thing is oftentimes and you'll get this a lot, someone will send it to the committee Leave her and not mm -hmm. send it to Karen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Oftentimes okay. you have to catch that and kind of just send it to Karen, or if anybody does. I'm sure Karen doesn't mind if she gets multiples, mm -hmm. but um, that does happen occasionally. Mm -hmm. 
When I've gotten things in the past that have gone to me that I really think should go to the committee, I'll ask the person who's sending it to, to send it on to Karen because that way it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's clear good. it's coming. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just sometimes mm -hmm. Karen hears yeah. things we assume that she's gotten mm -hmm. and she hasn't gotten mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. okay. Does it say on our website that, that Ms. Fitzgerald should be included in any and all correspondence with school committee? Because mm -hmm. it might be useful just to put yeah. that up there. I mean, all of how to contact us is up there, but she, it might be really good. Legal keeper of record. Mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll check into that. Okay, that would be great because if, if, the, if the information is up there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. You. No, that's so. There's a so I move approval of KAA. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote? Mm -hmm. So IJJ. Mm -hmm. you, no one really cares about the letters. I'm looking at you, Jennifer, and you're thinking, well, oh, my God. I, oh, I joined a really weird group yeah. of people. Um, <clears throat> this adds reference to electronic instructional materials. It deletes the establishment of a review committee by the principal because this is in our current practice. Textbooks mm -hmm. uh, selections by the district. Um, and the consideration section, the bottom two-thirds of the policy is updated to, to include more current non-discrimination mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. I move approval. Second. All those in favor? Excuse me, discussion? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, between the difference between our, our current and the suggested, um, on the top of the suggested language, it says, responsibility for the review and selection of textbooks and electronic instructional materials to be purchased or leased rests with the superintendent and other administrative staff subject to budgetary parameters established by the school committee. Mm -hmm. In our current one, it talks about how the school committee uh, is encouraged to establish a committee to assist in the process to determine the textbooks that best meet the curriculum guidelines of the district. Mm -hmm. It really leaves the school committee as a partner in this mix, and I think it comports very well with KAA, which is what we were discussing tonight with regard to the process of reviewing books that mm -hmm. might come to us as a, by a complainant. Mm -hmm. and, and that rests with the school committee as the ultimate arbiter of, you know, if they're not satisfied with the superintendent's recommendation. So I think that taking the school committee out of the process entirely except for budgetary parameters sort of doesn't comport well with, am I missing something? I think that the problem was that the law doesn't back up the school committee mm -hmm. being involved. Mm -hmm. So that's where the mm -hmm. change was, was mm -hmm. that the, the so legal the, basis mm -hmm. of that first thing doesn't exist, or at least it mm -hmm. doesn't exist now. Prior, prior to the so reform. Mm -hmm. All things were approved by the body. Our only our only entrance into that is what you just stated, mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. We don't have to if they decide if the administration decides to purchase a book or a, a series mm -hmm. of books. If we don't fund it, mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, just because it, the law yeah. doesn't require us to do it doesn't mean that we. I think we're they were conflating two things. Say that, that mm -hmm. we want to. So I think we're the. Right? The, the, the right of the public to complain about a textbook hasn't been taken away by this policy. Mm -hmm. No, that's no. not what he's it's talking about. Policy. He's talking about adoption of a new textbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, in my 11 years in the committee, we've never been involved in a conversation with the superintendent, <laughs> any of them, about the adoption of a textbook. We've well, never so this is different from Magic Treehouse books. Mm -hmm. so, well, well, those aren't considered textbooks for this discussion, then. Am I right? Or, well, that, mm -hmm. so that I think as Kathy was explaining earlier, the the adoption of the of the of the Magic Treehouse series, or the, the adoption of the tools of the mind, was done for accreditation purposes. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was different than anything we've ever done. Mm -hmm. We've never done that before, at least in my 11 years here. So <clears throat> we never get involved in a conversation about a textbook. Mm -hmm. Kathy's never come to us and said, "I'm thinking of buying these new the textbooks from McGraw books, Hill. Yeah, exactly. They're really cool. They got nice pictures in the front. What do you think?" <laughs> and we've never been involved in that. We've never gotten that granular. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get, I mean, I don't want to get involved in that. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, we, we don't get that granular. And if we're going to sit here and determine which social studies book we're going to use in seventh grade, uh, that, that's really out of the bounds of what we do. But, you know, obviously if we're doing a major adoption, say if we go to a math series in K-4, to which requires a major expenditure, that's certainly going to be budgeted because we need to look at the cost of the new materials, the cost of the professional development. So something that's major is going to end up on, on our plates somehow. But, you know, day-to-day -day stuff of what we are going to be using to teach, 
uh, is really best done either at the superintendent level or the building level, and the series of policies granulates it down so that we're talking about textbook sele uh, selection in IJJ followed by supplementary materials, which is more building based in IJK, uh, and, uh, and on through we're taking a look at different categories and assigning the uh, decision to make purchases in those categories in a little different places based on what they are. The, the basic thing is that we have the authority and responsibility to judge the superintendent's decisions. Mm -hmm. That still stays within us. Um, mm -hmm. the, as in the norms and standards I read tonight, and we all signed on, mm -hmm. we all agreed not to be mm -hmm. into this aspect of the day-to-day uh, -day education aspect. Mm -hmm. We do have the authority under the budget. Mm -hmm. We do have the right to question mm -hmm. expenditures and if a program, I think the superintendent, another good superintendents always inform the committee mm -hmm. of what's going mm -hmm. on and we can ask questions and things of that mm -hmm. nature. How much does it cost and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But the, dis the bottom, tonight, well, I was, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think Dr. Bodie was sharing the information that had to do with the public and mm -hmm. that had come forward mm -hmm. before us. Mm -hmm. Legally, it wasn't required. It was just good politics, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And I thank you. Mr. Yeah, Mr. I just I just want to restate the ideal that is in our IJJ now is really what I have as an ideal personally, which is mm -hmm. that we encourage a review committee to assist mm -hmm. in the process of determining what books might be best meeting the curriculum guidelines in the district so that we don't possibly get complaints like we, we got mm -hmm. over the last six months um, so that there's more of, a, of an input into the decision-making process about what books might be best for our kids. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we've had in this policy for, mm -hmm. for a long time. That if, if legally we can't have this language in it anymore, then obviously I'm, I can't support it. But that, that ideal is, is, is what I have. I, mm -hmm. Just real quick, uh, Mr. Thelman, would you be willing to just pull this one off and just get clarification from Rebecca? Whether we, or should we? I, I think one way or the other. I think we should vote. Right. I think we should vote. I think we should vote it because I think that first of all, uh, this is consistent with ed reform. Uh, for us to be review, uh, setting up a committee to revol review all textbooks is inconsistent with ed reform. And the second thing is, is what our goal is and our job is to say to the superintendent, we want our kids to be able to do this. We want this uh, these standards met. Uh, and hold the superintendent accountable for the standards. Now, if we then go and say we want you to buy these books to teach this, we're now handcuffing the superintendent so that it becomes almost an unfair situation. Our job is to set goals and to ask the superintendent to achieve them, not to get involved in the path she is using to achieve those goals. And the other thing is, you know, that the selection of textbooks in any school or school district is that there's it's usually a, f a lot of people have a say in it. So the superintendent, the mm -hmm. assistant superintendent, mm -hmm. the special education director, the directors, yeah. principals, teachers, departments. These are people mm -hmm. with years of expertise in this stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, they, you know, they mm -hmm. have a lot of conversations and they come to consensus. Mm -hmm. They look at a budget and they make a decision. And mm -hmm. Well. It, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you clarified that mm -hmm. for me because it does say that in the in the in the new one that you're proposing, which is mm -hmm. that it rests with the superintendent and other administrative sa staff. So I mean, the ideal of having some assistance in the decision-making process mm -hmm. is still here. Mm -hmm. It might not be assistance from us, which I grant you that mm -hmm. that's not our place. But it, as long as there's a team approach to it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think that's that could only help. Mm -hmm you make your decision in a better way. Mm -hmm. No superintendent lasts in office if they just sit in their office and just pick the textbooks <laughs> without yeah. cons consultation. <laughs> just, you know, you'll have 20 <laughs> teachers <laughs> showing up. The the revolt in the, uh, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't happen The here. trenches, they don't. Is there that, anything else to add to this one? I'll just say, that it is definitely a team. And in fact, uh, when I've been involved very directly in textbook uh, adoptions, I had a very, a very set protocol, mm. and things that you, you hear the thing. Here is what we want to be able to 
students to know and be able to do. And we started aligning, looking at the textbooks mm -hmm. to see which ones work the best. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, time consuming process. Mm -hmm. I mean, my hat's off to all the teachers that are usually involved in this because it's, mm -hmm. it's, there's a lot out there. And, and I know that I've just been with Linda at conferences and they just go through mm -hmm. everything that's out there. And they still, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a process. So nothing is not done unilaterally in this district. It is very much a team effort and tremendous amount of input. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah. Okay, IJK refers to the district of policy IJJ for uh, factors that should be considered when making uh, textbook selection. So it's for supplementary materials. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> IJL um, deletes the phrase curriculum approved by the school committee because we can't do that mm -hmm. and adds subject to review by the superintendent and the budgetary parameters of the school committee which is consistent with mass general laws and it adds a catch-all phrase library media staff specialists are urged to consult reputable unbiased professional prepared selection aids and adhere to the following goals and then it adds mm -hmm. a statement about receipt of uh, library books as gifts, and it clarifies mm -hmm. uh, that the policy is rooted in, in the United States Constitution, mm -hmm. especially the First Amendment. So <clears throat> moved. All, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the final one, <clears throat> uh, IJM, selection and adoption of materials offered by special interest groups. We need to have a space between offered and by, I guess. Okay, so changes the title uh, to selection and adoption of materials offered by special interest groups and codifies the current practice, which is that a faculty or staff member may use such materials only with the approval of the principal or department head. Mm -hmm. So these are supplemental materials that people use and mm -hmm. it needs to be approved by your boss. Motion? Seems like a good idea. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, it should be approved by the... Your director. I would be it should be. By your supervisor. Absolutely. <clears throat> she has prerogative. I would like to thank Mr. I'm oh, sorry. No, so now Karen, Karen was just said to me before the meeting, is this going to end? Is it going to slow down? So Judd's taking over. Well, it's going to be a more <laughs> <laughs> practical pace. <laughs> I would like Ten to thank meetings. Mr. Gilman for all the work he and his committee did, <laughs> uh, especially this latest part. I realize all the time and effort. Thank you very much. And I have to say, the addition this year of having Attorney Bryant at our meetings was huge. Yes. I mean, it was a big, imp I, 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 I had no sense of the budget with this thing. I, that mm. was a little problem, because mm. I didn't know what we could spend with her or not. But when she was there, it was a huge mm. help. Mm -hmm. That's great. Budget committee, anything? Uh, nope, we have not met. Community relations? Uh, as the chair for the past uh, two hours, I, I don't <laughs> think we, we've done no much. No meeting yet? No, but if, if, if there's anything uh, pending that we haven't touched yet, uh, if Ms. Fitzgerald would pass that on to, to me, I'd appreciate that. I don't think there is. <clears throat> Curriculum instruction and assessment and accountability. Nothing to report. Thank you. Facilities, nothing at this time, and I passed the Nothing, nothing at this time. Mm. Um, as the chair, I would like uh, to remind us all that we talked about having a uh, retreat with regard to goals and uh, uh, I would ask the superintendent to set out a doodle as soon as possible. Right, but I wanted some direction from the committee as to whether um, you would prefer to look at some Saturdays or would you prefer to try some late afternoon into the evening or do a mix and just see what happens. Do a mix and see what's there. How much time do we need? Mm -hmm. Like four hours? Are we looking at I a four-hour block? I would say that that would be enough. I would request that if you're looking in the afternoon, like a five to nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd like that better. <coughs> I prefer an afternoon. Five to nine or five to eight. Have din uh, talk uh, and over if dinner. If you're on the weekend, yeah. can we not start at eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Like nine. Nine. Nine okay. to one. Weekends can be tough with so much going on. But anyway. Well, okay. <clears throat> but all right, I'll put, together, nice I'll put that together. I'll put that together. Well, uh, I, I need to, we need to talk because there may be, yeah. there may be one other item yeah. that we might want to add. Okay, okay uh, I have nothing else at this time. Does anyone else? Okay, no. Secretary's report. I don't think there is one now. Okay, it's all over. Okay. I didn't make one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let it go. Hopefully we weren't going to read go. it anymore. So, just for clarification, th this item on the agenda, regular item, we would remove it, or yes. no, I'll just put it as to refer to the addendum to the uh, to the agenda. Or does it go on? I think she warrant? can refer to the addendum and just okay. say, oh, "There's an addendum." Here. I can say I can list anything. I can talk mm -hmm. about anything else. And and also, I was going to say, Ms. Fitzgerald, I can help you come up with what the blurb should be for the different items. If, the template. Well, the template, and also sometimes it's hard yeah. to figure out how to describe it. Yeah. Uh, power over there. Cool. So you may have to review right. this next year. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> this time uh, we will be entering executive uh, session. Oh. I don't, I don't think we need to. Oh, we don't need it. Okay. Yay. Oh, I move adjournment. Well, just a <laughs> second. Don't <laughs> be carried away. <laughs> Well, there's a, <laughs> the chair has been informed there is nothing to go for executive session. <laughs> At this time, Mr. Thielman, I will entertain a motion of adjournment. I want to compliment the chair on a great first meeting. <laughs> two hours, <laughs> two hours, great job. It's a new record for a first, first time well, chair. It's, it's, it's a new. The former chairs and all the other chairs have informed me that I can't talk except uh, uh, you're right, right. This should go in the history document. It's the one way to time. rein you in. You make a motion? I, I move adjournment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.